The Carnatic region is the region of peninsular South India lying between the Eastern Ghats and the Western Ghats, in the modern Indian states of Tamil Nadu and southern Andhra Pradesh. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The name Carnatic or Carnatic is originally a Tamil word which means that Karai, Karai meaning shore and Nataka, Nataka meaning dance. Since the word Carnatic or Karnataka region and music or Karai Nataka Kankatam Tamil is the base of cavalry based regions during the Chola periods, especially developed in the city of Pumpahar, Pumpukar, which was swallowed during a tsunami, remains still can be seen in Tamil Nadu with the same city name to improve and to integrate Tamil based dance and music. So comes the name Carnatic or Carnatic region, zone, as big landscape covering the whole gamut of cavalry based areas in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kerala and some in Andhra Pradesh. This particular dialect has been introduced during the Chola time period as a proof of in Carnatic or Carnatic zone development. In a later stage, this was combined together with Sanskrit words. The music was patronized by Chola, Pandyan, Rashtrakutas and later Vijayanagar kings. Further to add, there are several theories as to the derivation of the term. It may derive from the Sanskrit language Karnatakam from Karna. Topic. Ear. Plus Atati. He pleases. Topic. That which pleases the ear. Thus. Karnataka Samgita. Karnataka music, which was coined by Sarangadeva. According to Bishop Robert Caldwell, in his comparative grammar of the Dravidian languages, the term is derived from kar, black, and nadu, country, i.e. the black country, which refers to the black soil prevalent on the plateau of the southern Deccan. Hadangadi Narayan Rao suggests a derivation from karu, elevated, plus nadu, land. An elevated land. Also descriptive of the region's geography. The English. Carnatic has been classicalized in spelling. Topic: <inaudible> Geography. <inaudible> the region is located in southern India, between the Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, and the Coromandel Coast, in the Presidency of Madras. Properly, the name is, in fact, applicable only to the country of the Kanaresi extending between the eastern and western Ghats, over an irregular area narrowing northwards, from Palghat in the south to Gulbarga, Bidar in the north, and including Mysore. The extension of the name to the country south of the Karnataka was probably due to the Muslim conquerors who, in the 16th century, overthrew the kingdom of Vijayanagar, and who extended the name, which they found used of the country north of the Ghats to that south of them. After this period the plain country of the south came to be as called Karnataka Payanghat, or lowlands, as distinguished from Karnataka Balagat, or highlands. The misapplication of the name Karnatak was carried by the British a step further than by the Mahomedans, it being confined by them to the country below the Ghats, Mysore not being included. Officially, however, this name is no longer applied, the Karnatak having become a mere geographical term. Administratively, the name Karnatak or rather Karnataka is now applied only to the Bombay portion of the original Karnataka, viz. the districts of Belgaum, Darwar and Bijapur, part of Gulbarga district, North Karnataka, and the native states of the Southern Maharashtra Agency and Kolhapur. <laughs> Subdivisions The region generally known to Europeans as the Carnatic, though no longer a political or administrative division, is of great historical importance. It extended along the eastern coast about 600 km in length, and from 50 to 100 km in breadth. It was bounded on the north by the Gunter Sarkar, and thence it stretched southward to Cape Comorin. It was divided into the southern, central and northern Carnatic. The region south of the river Kolarun, which passes the town of Trichinopoly, was called the southern Carnatic. The principal towns of this division were Tanjore, Trichinopoly, Madurai, Trankabare, Negapadam and Tinevali. The central Carnatic extended from the Kolarun River to the river Penner, its chief towns being Madras, Pondicherry, Arcot, Velour, Cutalore, Pulikat, Nellar and a few other towns. The northern Carnatic extended from the river Penner to the northern limit of the country, and the chief town was Angalay. 
The Carnatic, as above defined, comprehended within its limits the maritime provinces of Nellar, Chingleput, South Arcot, Tanjore, Madura and Tinevali, besides the inland districts of North Arcot and Trichinopoly. The population of this region consists chiefly of Brahmanical Hindus. Mahometans are thinly scattered over the country. History At the earliest period of which any records exist, the area now known as the Carnatic was divided between the Pandya and Chola kingdoms, which with that of Shara dynasty or Kerala formed the three Tamil kingdoms of southern India. The Pandya kingdom practically coincided in extent with the districts of Madura and Tinevali, that of the Cholas extended along the Karamandal coast from Nellar to Padukatai, being bounded on the north by the Penner River, Penner River and on the south by the southern Velaru. The government of the area was shared for centuries with these dynasties by numerous independent or semi-independent chiefs, evidence of whose perennial internecine conflicts is preserved in the multitudes of forts and fortresses, the deserted ruins of which crown almost all the elevated points. In spite, however, of this passion of the military classes for war, the Tamil civilization developed in the country was of a high type. This was largely due to the wealth of the country, famous in the earliest times as now for its pearl fisheries. Of this fishery Korkai the Greek Kikso, now a village on the Tambraparni River in Tinevali, but once the Pandya capital, was the centre long before the Christian era. In Pliny's day, owing to the silting up of the harbour, its glory had already decayed and the Pandya capital had been removed to Madura, famous later as a centre of Tamil literature. The Chola kingdom, which four centuries before Christ had been recognised as independent by the Maurya king Ashoka, had for its chief port Kavirapadinam at the mouth of the Kaveri, every vestige of which is now buried in sand. For the first two centuries after Christ, a large sea borne trade was carried on between the Roman Empire and the Tamil kingdoms, but after Caracalla's massacre at Alexandria in AD 215, this ceased, and with it all intercourse with Europe for centuries also. Henceforward, until the 9th century, the history of the country is illustrated only by occasional and broken lights. The 4th century saw the rise of the Pallava power, which for some 400 years encroached on, without extinguishing, the Tamil kingdoms. When in AD 640 the Chinese traveller Suan Sang visited Kanchi Kanjevaram, the capital of the Pallava king, he learned that the kingdom of Chola embraced but a small territory, wild, and inhabited by a scanty and fierce population, in the Pandya kingdom Malakuta, which was under Pallava suzerainty, literature was dead, Buddhism all but extinct, while Hinduism and the naked Jain saints divided the religious allegiance of the people, and the pearl fisheries continued to flourish. The power of the Pallava kings was shaken by the victory of Vikramaditya Chalukya in AD 740, and shattered by Aditya Chola at the close of the 9th century. From this time onward, the inscriptional records are abundant. The Chola dynasty, which in the 9th century had been weak, now revived, its power culminating in the victories of Rajaraja the Great, who defeated the Chalukyas after a four years' war, and, about AD 994, forced the Pandya kings to become his tributaries. A magnificent temple at Tanjore, once his capital, preserves the records of his victories engraved upon its walls. His career of conquest was continued by his son Rajendra Choladeva I, self-styled Ganjikonda owing to his victorious advance to the Ganges, who succeeded to the throne in AD 1018. The ruins of the new capital which he built, called Ganjikonda Cholapuram, still stand in a desolate region of the Trichinopoly district. His successors continued the eternal wars with the Chalukyas and other dynasties, and the Chola power continued in the ascendant until the death of Kulatunga Chola III in 1278, when a disputed succession caused its downfall and gave the Pandyas the opportunity of gaining for a few years the upper hand in the south. In 1310, however, the Mahometan invasion under Malik Kafir overwhelmed the Hindu states of southern India in a common ruin. Though crushed, however, they were not extinguished. A period of anarchy followed. The struggle between the Chola kings and the Muslims issuing in the establishment at Kanshi of a usurping Hindu dynasty which ruled till the end of the 14th century, while in 1365 a branch of the Pandyas succeeded in re establishing itself in part of the Kingdom of Madura, where it survived till 1623. At the beginning of the 15th century, the whole country had come under the rule of the kings of Vijayanagar, but in the anarchy that followed the overthrow of the Vijayanagar Empire, Empire by the Muslims in the 16th century, the Hindu viceroys Nayakas established in Madura, Tanjore and Kanchi made themselves independent, only in their turn to become tributary to the kings of Golconda and Bijapur, who divided the Carnatic between them. 
Muslim era Towards the close of the 17th century, the country was reduced by the armies of Aurangzeb, who in 1692 appointed Zulfikar Ali, Nawab of the Carnatic, with his seat at Arcot. Meanwhile, the Maratha's power had begun to develop. In 1677, Shivaji had suppressed the last remnants of the Vijayanagar power in Velour, Jinji, and Kurnool, while his brother Venkoji, who in 1674 had overthrown the Nayaks of Tanjavur, established in that city a dynasty which lasted for a century. The collapse of the Delhi power after the death of Aurangzeb produced further changes. The Nawab Sadat Allah of Arkot (1710–1732) established his independence. His successor Dust Ali (1732–1740) conquered and annexed Madura in 1736, and his successors were confirmed in their position as Nawabs of the Carnatic by the Nizam of Hyderabad after that potentate had established his power in southern India. After the death of Nawab Muhammad Anwar Ud Din (1744–1749), the succession was disputed between Muhammad Ali and Hussein Dust. In this quarrel, the French and English, then competing for influence in the Carnatic, took opposite sides. The victory of the British established Muhammad Ali in power over part of the Carnatic till his death in 1795. Meanwhile, however, the country had been exposed to other troubles. In 1741 Madura, which the Nawab Dust Ali had added to his dominions in 1736 after the demise of the Nayaks of Madurai, was conquered by the Marathas, and in 1743 Hyder Ali of Mysore overran and ravaged the central Carnatic. The latter was reconquered by the British, to whom Madura had fallen in 1758, and, finally, in 1801 all the possessions of the Nawab of the Carnatic were transferred to them by a treaty which stipulated that an annual revenue of several lakhs of pagodas should be reserved to the Nawab, and that the British should undertake to support a sufficient civil and military force for the protection of the country and the collection of the revenue. On the death of the Nawab in 1853, it was determined to put an end to the nominal sovereignty, a liberal establishment being provided for the family. The Carnatic region, when first entered into by the British, was ruled by military chieftains called Polygars. In 1805, after the decisive defeat of the Polygars, the Polygar forts and military establishments were destroyed. Carnatic region was place of Carnatic wars between Mughan Empire, Britain and France which were ultimately led to British victory and the domination of British Empire over India. Topic: See also Carnatic music Carnatic wars 18th century Topic. References This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Carnatic. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press.